Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. Rich groom plus poor bride equals entitled parents. After that, I helped get my wife's boss fired. And after that, I ruined this guy's entire holiday. Now Karen told me if we can get 1,000 likes on this video, she won't try suing anyone for an entire week. So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. And huge shout out to our newest official members of the Re Army, David Roberts and The Mini Marie. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Join as an official channel member today and I'll give you a special shout out in our next video. Rich groom plus poor bride equals entitled parents. This happened a few years ago, and to be fair, they weren't the worst couple I have dealt with in my career, but even so, they were jerks to work with. So the backstory. The groom was a rich businessman from the UK that was marrying a single mother from Africa. Based on the ways their families conducted themselves, it was clear to say that their backgrounds were vastly different. I had been hired to do the wedding video. I was shooting alone, rather uncomfortably I might add, as I had filmed a different wedding the day before and all the service providers had gotten light cases of food poisoning. Their wedding was on a Sunday and, as I had been hired by the bride's side of the family, their budget was fairly limited. Therefore, all pre-ceremony coverage had been cut from their package. I arrived about 30 minutes before the ceremony to see the groom cussing out the DJ about something. I don't actually know what. The ceremony started and didn't add much to the story. The bride's stupid lawn pin, my company's name for kids, was screaming throughout the entire ceremony, making it impossible to hear the sermon and making me feel oh so happy knowing that I was going to get tasked trying to clean up the audio after. Oh, the joys of wedding videos. Cut forward to after the ceremony, with everyone gathering for the couple to sign the register. The couple entered the room and saw something something horrendous something so devastating to their moment that not even god would have had the solution right there right where they wanted to sign there was a book lying on the table get the manager straight away this book has to be removed the jerk groom yelled to the closest person in earshot it took me a moment to register what had just happened before i took a step towards the table simply picking up the book and putting it back on the shelf so you'd think that would be the end of it, right? With the obstacle now removed, that they could simply sign the papers and go on with their lives. Nah, this had upset them so much that the room had to be cleared while they took some time alone to rant about how inadequate everyone is and how this book had ruined their entire day. I'm not even joking. They really did say that the book had ruined their entire day. So eventually the dang register gets signed. The two most dramatic people in the world are now husband and wife, and everyone is standing outside. Finally, the door opens. We wake up from our afternoon naps on our feet. The guests hold their hands, ready to throw confetti, only to see the MC walk through the door and announce that they won't be coming out, as the bride doesn't want the wind messing up her hair. If I had rolled my eyes any bigger, they would have come out of their sockets. Why? Because the bride, not the groom, but the bride was from this area, and she knew the wind never stops blowing. Did she think God was going to pause the weather for her while the rest of her guests stand outside burning in the sun for almost 15 minutes? Anyway, move forward to the reception. The couple shoot and the family photos had to be postponed to later because, for some reason, the bride thought the wind was going to change. This meant that everyone now entered the reception hall more than 90 minutes earlier than the schedule had stipulated. So what does the groom of the year do? He goes and yells at the wedding coordinator that the first course isn't ready yet. Needless to say, this caused some panic in the kitchen. I should further point out that this wasn't your average three course meal. This was eight courses. So the schedule was something like this. Speech, course, speech, course, eight times. The opening of the dance floor bouquet and garter, etc. I did my setup quickly as the first speech was about to commence. Only one problem. 
The number of guests was way too many for the venue's capacity, so there was literally no way for me to get anywhere near the bridal table or the podium where the speakers would be making their speeches. I set up as well as I could, a basic two-camera setup, and took a stand behind the main camera. During the speech, I glanced in the direction of my second camera only to see the bride's lawn pin is trying to climb up my tripod. How the camera didn't fall over might prove that there is a higher power up in the clouds, but nonetheless, I sprinted towards it, grabbing the kid before he could knock over the camera. I put him down, telling him politely not to touch it. The camera had moved during the kid's action and was now no longer pointing in any kind of relevant direction. I glanced back at my main camera, only to see that the speaker was no longer standing behind the podium and had gone to stand directly behind the couple. I had missed it completely. I sprinted back to my main camera, readjusted the shot, glanced back at my second camera, only to see the dang lawn pin aiming to try and climb up it again. Once more, I sprinted back to my second camera, picked the camera up and set it up right next to the main one. This was the most boring setup ever done in my career, but it would now have to do. The speech eventually ended and the first course was served. I was the only person slash service provider not catered for because, honestly, who cares about the videographer? To be fair, this didn't bother me because I wouldn't have been able to eat anyway, but I was still feeling horrible and really just wanted to rest for a while. I waited for the guests to start eating before spotting a sofa at the back of the venue and deciding it looked like a great place to rest. I had just sat down when I was approached by the jerk groom and the lawn pin. Groom. What are you doing now? Me, immediately back on my feet. There's really nothing I can shoot at the moment, so just waiting for the next speech. Was there something you needed? Yeah, please watch this stupid kid. And yes, he really did describe his new stepson as the stupid kid. Me. Huh? Yeah, just keep him quiet and make sure he doesn't disturb the guests. Me. What about when the next speech starts? Thank you, the groom said, walking away without answering my question. I looked after him with bleeding eyes. This wasn't happening. The kid stared at me. I stared back at him. He continued staring at me and then started wailing his eyes out. I looked around frantically to see if any of the kid's relatives were going to come help, but nope. Giving in to my fate, I climbed down to the floor, opened the kid's backpack, and started unpacking his toys. He stopped crying quite quickly as I let him show me his favorite toys. Skip forward about 15 to 20 minutes. The kid and I were in the middle of an intense dinosaur battle when I heard the next speech starting. I had asked the MC to give a two minute warning before each speech so that I could have time to set my cameras up again. I, unfortunately, had to move them away every time as to not block the traffic flow of the waiters. He forgot every single time. I missed the first few seconds of the second speech as I redid my setup, only to hear that the kid had started wailing again. I glanced in the direction of the couple who were both staring at me with daggers in their eyes. I stared back at them with a look that said, what the heck do you want me to do about it? And left the kid to cry as I tried recording the second speech. The speech ended, well, I assume it did. The lawn pin was yelling so loud that I never heard it end, but I'm sitting here typing this story, so I think it's a fair bet. I moved my cameras away again and moved back towards the couch when I was bombarded by the couple. Bride. Why weren't you watching him? Me. Because I can't play babysitter and shoot your wedding video at the same time. Groom. Well, I told you to watch him. Me. And your wife paid me to capture your day on video. Again, I can't do both. Well, that was very embarrassing for us. A silence followed this, with me and the couple just staring at each other. Me. Are you waiting for me to say something? Just go do your job. The groom snapped before stomping off with his new wife. Which one? I yelled after them, once more getting ignored. The rest of the reception played off more or less the same until I was relieved of my babysitting duties by the brides, sister, aunt, mother, hairstylist. I have no idea who the heck she was, except that I now had to share my sofa. 
so the reception finally ended. I felt like I had just aged 10 years and it was now time for the family and couple photos. But what was this? Their praying had helped nothing and the wind was now blowing even worse than before. Now at this point, any logical bride would probably have been asking herself some questions. Specifically, what difference is it going to make if my hair gets messed up now as almost everything has already been done? And what is the point of even having my hair done if I'm not going to take any decent photos? This bride didn't ask those questions though and therefore insisted that all her photos, couple, and family take place on the porch, on one single small spot on the porch. So the shoot went like this. I finally get them in frame and the main photographer blocks me. I try a different angle and the second photographer blocks me. Heck, I didn't blame the photographers. This was like trying to fit six people into a matchbox without taking out the matches. There was simply no space for all of us and the couple had left this so late that the light was disappearing by the second. If this poor photographer had 20 minutes for all the photos, then I'll be surprised. The next thing to do was getting all the guests back upstairs for the opening of the dance floor. Both the photographer and I had about an hour left on the clock, so we were at least doing well for time. The photographer and I started back up the stairs to do our setup, but we were suddenly stopped by the MC. The MC informed us that the bride was tired, so she and the groom were going to retire to the honeymoon suite and would return in about an hour for the opening of the dance floor. The photographer and I looked at each other with a kind of, what? expression, but shrugged it off and went to wait upstairs. News of the couple's temporary departure quickly reached the guests and within less than 30 minutes, the entire reception hall had emptied, with the exception of the waiters, bar staff, photographers, and myself. Another 30 minutes passed with no sign of the couple returning. Both the photographers and I were now off the clock. The photographers waited another 15 minutes, literally saying, forget this, and leaving. I wanted to do the same. My God, did I want to do the same. But the video I had taken so far was so bad. It was nightmare fuel bad, and I simply could not bring myself to leave without at least capturing the opening of the dance floor. And so I continued to wait for another 90 minutes. Finally, the couple returned, followed by around 10 or 15 guests. All of them now wore their casual attire and looked like they were ready for a night at a dodgy nightclub. And then I heard the words that finally made me lose my patience. MC, the couple isn't going to open the dance floor anymore. I stared at the couple with a livid expression on my face as the hip hop music started playing. The groom took to the bar and the bride started throwing grotesque dance moves with her friends. Seeing this, I picked up my gear and walked out of the room without saying goodbye to the couple. I did, predictably, get an email from the groom a few days later telling me to remove all the lawn pins crying from the video and that they expected the video to be a true representation of their special day. That I can say it definitely was. What would you have done if you were in this position? Would you have stuck around and kept trying or would you just have bolted and got out of there? Let me know in the comments. Next we've got, I helped get my wife's boss fired. So this is a story all about how my wife and I got her boss fired. For reference, my wife will be called Mary and her boss is Karen. I know, original, right? So Mary started working for a college five years ago as an administrative assistant. She was given odd and end tasks, one of which was writing up the school handbook. She noted in the handbook that staff were required to take time for professional development. After some years and a few promotions, she lands a manager position in the department and spearheads an initiative to have all staff under her have approved time to attend professional development conferences. Karen always rejected this idea, but Mary decided one day to go to Karen's boss. We will call Bob. Bob is great. Once Mary has enough weight in the college, she went around Karen and got Bob to approve conferences for everyone in the department. For the next year or so, everyone got to choose any conference around the continental USA to attend on the company's dime. Everyone would come back with notes taken at every session attended, attached with a conference itinerary and given to their direct supervisor as proof of attendance. The employee would also present key points learned from their conference at a weekly departmental meeting. 
pretty simple morale boosting opportunity until someone had to abuse it. Karen had been bragging to other department directors as well as to Mary about swimming with dolphins during her recent travel to a conference. Mary didn't think much of it as usually there was sometimes a free morning or afternoon to do with as you pleased at the conferences. My wife told me this during our nightly pillow talk and having been raised in Orlando where Karen decided to attend a conference, my head popped up and I asked, where? Mary replied with a well-known location run by a well-known company with a whale for a logo. I quickly replied that they close at 5.30. When did Karen have time for this? Mary, who had access to Karen's itinerary, dropped her jaw when she realized the conference Karen attended did not have free time during the business hours of the dolphin swimming experience. Mary went into an enraged clerical fury as she pulled up Karen's full travel itinerary for flight, hotel, conference, and other reimbursements. The school does most departmental work online, and therefore the school's server can be accessed remotely from secured or approved devices like Mary's phone. She also checked the website where Karen went swimming at to confirm hours of operation. According to the records submitted, there was no way Karen had time to swim with the dolphins during the experience's normal business hours without missing part of the conference. And according to Carrie's itinerary, she was supposed to have attended all sessions. Mary worked hard to have the privilege to travel the country to attend conferences, and Karen just messed it all up. Mary eventually wrote all of this up, attached the itinerary documents, attached photos of the encounter, and apparently from other theme parks that Karen had neglected to mention from social media, attached the hours of operation and sent this all to Bob. Mary texted me about an hour after she got to work the next day, saying Bob was livid. He was currently in the process of questioning everyone Karen had bragged to to see if the stories all matched up. A few days later, Karen was fired from the company for only attending one session of the three-day conference lying about her report filed, using company funds for travel hotels and food to go play at theme parks, and for submitting a time card to get paid while doing all of that. Although Mary's name was anonymous through all of this, Karen seemed to blame Mary anyways. Karen sent mean and dark texts to Mary several times until the school could send a cease and desist. Worse of all, I guess Karen's husband was a deadbeat, so not only did Karen have to trade in her massive SUV for a smaller vehicle, she had also just signed on a new house only days before she was fired and now had no income to support the said home. I'm not completely cynical. People shouldn't be homeless. But Karen had also taken credit for a lot of Mary's work, made Mary do Karen's workload while Karen went away from her keyboard, and many other instances of foul play I can't remember because there's so much pillow talk. Needless to say, Karen reaped what she sowed. Do you feel bad that Karen's losing her home or do you think she deserves it? Leave me a comment letting me know and drop a re while you're at it. Next we've got, I ruined this guy's entire holiday. I work at a call center for a large UK luxury caravan holiday park company. It's actually not a bad place to work and I have a lot of fun. Like most call center jobs, I deal with a lot of entitled customers. But there's one in particular that totally takes the cake. I spoke to this guy not long after getting the job, probably not even two months in. It's a long conversation, but I promise it's worth the read. He called up and he had turned up to the holiday park and checked into his accommodation, which was an extra wide and extra long three bedroomed model. I don't remember the exact name of the unit he was in, but it was in our bog standard caravan. It was a new model and pretty big. I went through my whole introduction and data protection, etc., and asked how I can help. I don't remember the exact conversation, but it went something like this. Entitled Parent I've just checked into my caravan, and it is absolutely tiny. It's a joke. Me I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Have you been to the reception to let them know you aren't happy? It's company policy that the call center aren't allowed to step on the park toes, so any complaints need to be dealt with by the park. But we get so many customers who call us up thinking they'll get a better compensation offer than what the park has given them. Entitled Parent Yes, they aren't going to do anything. They said there aren't any other caravans available. 
and the only option is to switch to a different park, which is ridiculous. Me. Unfortunately, sir, if we have no other accommodations available on park, there's nothing we can do. I can see you are in an extra wide and extra long accommodation currently, so I doubt we would have anything bigger on the park anyway. Perhaps he cuts me off. We were in a much bigger accommodation last year, and we paid more money this year. I check his previous booking, and he was in a bog standard two bedroom unit the previous year. That means his current accommodation is 20% wider and 20% longer than the last year, just with an extra bedroom. Me. I understand you're disappointed, but I've just looked and you are actually in a larger accommodation this year than last year. Unfortunately, unless you would consider switching to a different park and paying the upgrade cost for a lodge, we don't have anything larger available. Entitled Parent. This is ridiculous. Let me speak to your manager now. <laughs> me. We don't have any managers available at the moment. Have you spoke with the manager on park? I tried. They wouldn't let me speak to the manager. Me. Knowing something isn't quite right about that. Okay. No worries, sir. Let me call the park and see if there's anything I can do. Are you okay to just wait on hold for a couple of minutes, just while I try to clear this up? Whatever. I place the guy on hold and call through to the reception of the park he's staying at. Me. Hi, I've got a man on the phone here who's staying in this something caravan. He's not happy because he thinks it's too small, and I'm just wondering if I can transfer him through to a manager. Receptionist. He's already been down today and spoken with our general manager, but he isn't happy with what she said. He can speak with her again if he likes, but he'll need to come down here to speak with her. Me, confused. He just told me you guys refused to let him speak with the manager. I'm so confused. Receptionist. No, he's been down here three times now and spoken with her twice. He's also been standing outside of the reception making notes and staring at us for hours today. He wants money but we've told him he isn't going to get it because there isn't anything actually wrong with his caravan. He just wants a bigger model, which we don't have. I apologize for wasting the receptionist's time and go back to the guy on hold. This is where it gets crazy. Me. Thanks so much for holding there, sir. So I've just spoken with the park, and unfortunately there is no manager currently on site higher up than the woman you've already spoken with. She's the general manager of the park. Well, she's an unhelpful idiot. She was incredibly rude, and she didn't want to help us at all. I want to speak to your manager now! Me. Unfortunately, as per our complaints policy, you do need to deal with this issue with the park. And, as they've already explained, we won't issue any compensation to yourself, as your issue is a personal opinion. There isn't anything wrong with your accommodation. Your entire company is a shambles. You've ruined my holiday. This caravan is a joke. It's a joke! Me. Sir, I will not tolerate you speaking to me like that. I'm trying to help you, and I will terminate the call if you continue to speak to me like that. He continued to scream at me the entire time, but I didn't hear the exact wording. You have ruined our holiday! We paid good money for this! He's honestly breaking his microphone at this point. He's screaming so loud, I can barely understand him. Sir, it is our company policy that you deal with this on park, and I will not tolerate you speaking to me this way. I will sue you! You love ruining people's holidays and taking people's money! <laughs> Goodbye, sir. I hung up on him at this point. No way in heck am I going to listen to that for $8.50 an hour. I kept an eye on his client profile, though. Turns out, he did the same thing to the reception staff, and police had to be called later that night. Bear in mind, this guy was on holiday with his wife and baby. He is now banned from staying on any of our parks, didn't get to stay for his holiday, and got zero compensation. And shoutouts to our re-generals of the day. Lord Grego, who left a ton of re's. Laurel Cook, Trendy Potato, and Spring Trap. Become tomorrow's re-generals by leaving as many re's as you can in the comments below. And watch this video next. You will love it.